Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, no matter where you are in the world today. Thank you so much for joining us back to We Who Work panel discussion. My name is Dawn Krush, and I'm so excited to have you all back here for our tuning in to our sixth panel discussion. So as we continue to build our panel, bringing new panelists on, I want to encourage all of you out there watching and listening uh, to continue to share your stories about this pandemic, continue to share your stories of everything you've been through. And as we all continue to press forward, uh, you know, I want to encourage everybody out there that we will hopefully get through this pandemic together and to keep uh, pushing towards change and to fight with it, not against it. Uh, so as change is inevitable, we all face through it. So I want to encourage you all out there to embrace it as it comes. And even through those most difficult of times, and even when we do not understand it, change is necessary. So as we continue to all go through it here, uh, one of my biggest panels, uh, one of my biggest goals here on this panel is to really shine light on all the adversity that our professionals really face. So remembering that those panelists and these professionals are representing different locations. We're all coming from different backgrounds. We're all coming from different professions. I think it's extremely important to remember change does not discriminate, and that as we all continue to move through this time, change will come to all of us. And so even when we do not understand it, it's important to listen to others' story so that you can hopefully find new mechanisms and coping with change uh, so we can get through this together. So I always want to continue to spread how grateful I am for not only all of you out there, and my amazing panelists here today. I want to remember that we are all here together and for the goal of being together and spreading hope and spreading change and adversity and the knowledge to get through it day by day. So if you're new here, hello and welcome. I'm so happy to have you back. And if you're not and you're returning, I'm absolutely welcoming you back with open arms. Uh, so as we jump into our panel for today, like all of my guests, I'm grateful to have today we'll be welcoming Mr. Corey Lieber, which I'm so happy to have you. Hi, Corey. Hi, Dom. Um, so as we continue to discuss adversity and change, which I've already mentioned, uh, Corey I, is a, a great person to have on here, guys. So uh, he's not only someone I've shared many amazing moments with throughout my life, he's a dedicated psychologist. He's a great friend to others. He's an amazing father and he's an advocate in the psychological field. So I wanna highlight Corey and all the amazing things he's done in the field and how he gets through difficult situations and how he copes with change. So, I mean, let's be honest, Corey is a perfect person to have here today. Uh, he deals with many different difficult situations day in and day out. So uh, just before I virtually hand over the mic to Corey here, uh, grab your pen, grab your paper. You're going to wanna to listen to Corey. If you can record it even better, Grab, grab a friend, grab a family member, cuddle up with your animal, whatever you want to do here today. It's important that you watch and listen uh, however you can, uh, because Corey's not only a great communicator, he's a great leader. So I think that we all can take a tip from him. So without any further ado, I want to pass to Corey. Corey, over to you. I want you to introduce yourself to everyone and let them know you a little bit about you, because I mean, I'm so blessed to know you. So go ahead. Well, thank you very much, Don. How can I beat an introduction like that? I do appreciate it. Uh, so like Don said, my name is Corey Leeper. Uh, I am the director of the ACT team, that is the Assertive Community Treatment Team at Lenape Valley Foundation in Doylestown. Uh, Lenape Valley Foundation is a nonprofit mental health organization based in Doylestown for the last 60 plus years at this point. Uh, I've had the privilege of working for that company for the past five and a half years, five of which have been with the ACT team. Uh, I started out in January of 2015 as an intern in their partial program. Now I'm strictly working, um, like I said, as the director of the ACT team. I started out as a therapist, uh, working with individuals who are suffering from, uh, excuse me, let me rephrase it, who are living with mental illness, uh, whether it be bipolar disorder, uh, schizophrenia, or schizoaffective disorder. And over the last year and some change now, we've been dealing, obviously, with the ongoing pandemic and the uh, life's ever curveballs being thrown our way uh, and, and how to adapt, not just with our clients, but with ourselves. Um, and what we've found is that we all are dealing with this at the exact same time. And it kind of helps to ease the burden of uh, a day in and day out of a client of what they might be going through. So it, it, it eases their mind to know that we're also struggling with it. And it, it's helpful to know um, that they can turn to us in their time of need. Yeah, I mean, it makes so much sense 
you know, you talk about your clients and, and how they're going through it. But I also think it's extremely important that they know how you go, you guys are going through it. You, you know, you're learning every day as we all are, as, as we all have been really through the past year. And honestly, if nobody told you today, Corey, thank you, because you are truly doing hard work. And, uh, you know, all those people out there who maybe don't understand a little bit about our field and um, the burnout that comes with that and the struggle that comes with that, uh, it can often be very difficult um, when you're in situations and you're um, helping others cope with these type of mental disorders and whatnot. So again, if nobody told you today, thank you, Corey, because I, I know that it, it cannot be easy and especially, uh, you know, dealing with all of the outside burden and the inside burden and uh, taking all those responsibilities on because, uh, you know, thank God there is people like you out there that uh, take on these responsibilities that some may not have the patience or really the ability to get through these difficult situations with others. So, um, you know, really, as we continue to grow and learn more about this organization, and I'm, I'm really grateful, um, I will definitely include a link in our post so that people can check out uh, you guys as well. Uh, but, you know, I want to hear a little bit about, you know, how your organization itself or really um, you really taking on that director role, how you guys have been impacted uh, during COVID-19. Yeah, so uh, I guess last year at this time, I had just taken on the assistant director role. Um, and I think that the date is coming up sometime in mid-March where we finally decided to shut down our face-to-face -face operations. Uh, the, the company as a whole shut their doors and we all went to telehealth. Um, and now here we are almost a year later, we're doing a little bit of both. We're still doing a lot of telehealth. Uh, I wouldn't say restrictions have eased up, but they've gotten a little bit better in terms of being provided PPE by the company. Um, you know, still socially distancing when we're seeing our clients, you know, face to face in the community. Uh, some are now allowed into our offices. We have temperature uh, checks at the front door. We as our as uh, team members also check our temperatures as well as we come into the office. Um, clean and sanitize whenever we can. Um, but it's still being impacted to this day. Uh, there's still, you know, a lot of different programs within Lenape Valley that are not operating within the offices. Uh, my team, uh, we have about 18 to 20 staff on our team. And a lot of us are still working from home at this point. Um, obviously, as you mentioned, Donna, I am a father. I have two kids. Uh, my daughter, who is in first grade, is doing uh, virtual learning three days a week. So I'm home with her a lot of those days. The other two days, thankfully, she's in school and I'm able to get to the office. So there's a lot of just adapting to the day in and day out functions of work, of life. Um, you know, obviously, I'm sitting in my daughter's room. That's why you see there's a pink background. It's the quietest place in the house right now. Um, but honestly, in the beginning, it was a lot more difficult to figure out how we were just going to do it, how we were going to deal with it. And I think learning from what my previous... Uh, director went through and how she was able to kind of figure the goings on of the company. It sort of morphed into when I took on the director role of just continuing that, making everybody feel comfortable and just letting them know we're all here for each other. You know, we're not going to pressure anybody that doesn't feel comfortable to come into the office and have to meet with a client. If, if clients who, you know, want to talk over the phone or do video chats, if they would rather do it that way for the time being, then we'll do it. And a lot of them still feel comfortable doing that way. Um, but I can honestly tell you the whole face-to-face -face interaction, it's taken a toll. You know, I think we as you know, human beings, we need that constant interaction with one another. And I think doing videos, obviously seeing you on a video, it makes it a little bit easier than if we were, say, talking over the telephone. Uh, but nothing compares to, you know, seeing a person face-to-face -face and just having that great communication. Yeah. I definitely agree with you. You know, there's something um, about that tangibility when you're with somebody and that human connection. Uh, you know, even the power of presence with one another, which I'm sure you you can agree with, uh, it really does make a difference. So all those who out there who have been affected, uh, both, you know, maybe individually, organizationally, uh, whatever it may be, uh, you know, we have all felt that effect of maybe that social distancing and literally feeling the, dif the difference in ourselves of that social distance where we need that human interaction. And, and sometimes, you know, I am very fortunate. I, I get to have great conversations with professionals as you ha have great conversations with professionals from your work, Corey, and um, also the clients as well. But, you know, me and Corey, we're both very communicative. We're, very, we're both very interactive. We both love talking with people. So I, I totally uh, can relate with Corey when he says there is definitely a difference, you know, but, uh, you know, you guys continue to provide great work. 
uh, continue to be there for your clients, which is obviously the most important. Uh, but, you know, of course, there is that relatability that you shared, Corey. You are sitting in your daughter's room. You are finding the, the, the quietest room in the house, which so many others have felt. So many others are looking for that one quiet spot in the house because suddenly, you know, they're all running around the home and everybody wants a glass of milk at the same time. And as you're trying to, you know, just get that one email done, we've all been through that through this pandemic. So it's so relatable that, you know, you have to find a way to manage and adapt, like you said, um, you know, even when it is the most difficult of times. So uh, again, thank you, Corey. I appreciate you sharing all this because it really is necessary. And I also think it's extremely important that uh, those out there that are going to be listening and watching this here today, uh, you really listen to Corey is a strength in the community of the psychological field. He really, he knows the background of uh, the history of psychology. He understands it. We both have studied it. Uh, we're both very fortunate to have master's degree, which didn't come easy to us. We both worked very hard for that. But with that, we have a lot of knowledge in the field. We have a lot of understanding. So uh, we've really been able to show others how impactful it can be through these difficult times to stay strong, but also ourselves, we're going through this as well. And I think it's important that others in the community understand that even the strongest pillars of in the community, the people who understand the knowledge as much as the rest of them, uh, you know, we, we've gone through it ourselves. We're human beings. We relate to you. We understand you. And, and even if you don't have the, that understanding of human behavior, or you don't have that psychology background, you know, you just, it's important that you all know out there, we are going through change as well. We continue to understand and, and learn something new every day, um, whether it be from you or uh, our listeners or our panelists or each other or a family member or a friend, or really just doing some research and learning uh, more just by ourselves and, and taking that knowledge in by reading. So it's extremely important, I think, out there for everybody to know. We've talked previously about burnout and burnout does not discriminate. Burnout can come to anybody. It doesn't matter what color you are, what your race is, what your background, we can all feel that. So it's, imp it's important that those out there, um, you know, even when you're looking to those pillars of strength, you know, those pillars of strength sometimes need weak moments. So um, we can all relate to that. So thank you for sharing, Corey. Uh, jumping into my next question for you, you know, like we've previously mentioned, um, I I know how much you have always promoted happiness and growth for others. I've witnessed that full, firsthand and I am super appreciative of that. But um, what are some of the ways that you've managed yourself to stay motivated or stay positive, you know, really through some difficult times we face? Yeah, it's a great question. And one, I guess I never really took the time to think about, you know, this, when you're in the field that, you know, we work in, Dawn, it, it almost just comes natural to always want to help that person in need. But we also always tend to forget about ourselves. I mean, you've used the word burnout multiple times here today. And if there's one thing I always tell my team, self-care is important. It, it really is. Um, but I, I love to see the drive in my team, the willingness to go above and beyond for, for an individual. And that makes me really happy to know that even in tough times like this, we're still willing to give 110% to one another or to our teammates. So that encourages me to continue doing what I do on a daily basis. Now, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. We don't always have perfect dates. I mean, today, for example, between me doing a meeting with my team, um, helping my daughter with her math, you know, I'm seeing her struggle a little bit, but I'm also understanding that she's gaining a new knowledge that maybe you and I never had when we were younger. I mean, could you imagine what would have happened if the pandemic hit when we were kids and how our parents had to deal with not really a lot of technology that they have nowadays. So just to see her grow, um, to see my son who's in preschool thrive and be around his friends five days a week, uh, to see, you know, my wife Jenna go to work every day and still help, you know, her patients out. That's my motivating factor is that there are good people in the world and, and there's still a lot of good to come from this pandemic. It's, it looks very gray as it did in the beginning. It looks a little bit now, but you know, given the vaccines are coming out and there's there's new hope for, you know, opening back up our offices, you know, so there's a lot to look forward to that keeps me going every day, every minute, just knowing that things could change for a positive on a dime. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I totally agree. Anything can change at any time and, and hoping that that is going to be that, that flip of a coin where it's going to be a positive change and not a negative one, you know, and I think 
Uh, we continue to talk about how it's important to lean on one another and it's important to seek out those people who provide you strength or somebody who uh, can give you some knowledge or, you know, really just somebody to lean on. Uh, but I agree with you wholeheartedly, Corey. You know, we talk a lot in our panels. It's about the we, not the me. And it's, I think it's extremely important. And what I mean by that is it takes a pillar of, it, it takes many pillars in the community to make you whole. Uh, and we need to lean on each other, even during those difficult times. And even when we feel alone and, and we feel like there's not somebody that we can relate to or that will understand us. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I decided to do this project and that I wanted to get out there and provide a resource to other people who have never maybe had the chance to hear from somebody from the psychology field or any any of the fields that we've covered so far and many fields to come of our panelists to come. So I, I really, uh, you know, I can relate and I understand that although I don't have small children running around and I can only imagine what it would have been like trying to have my parents teach me math when I was, uh, you know, the little girl's age. So I, I can't imagine being Haley, but I'm super, I'm sure she's going to turn her many years from now being super fortunate and super thankful as she doesn't even know how amazing her parents are yet. Um, but one day she'll really, really know how truly, truly amazing you guys are for doing everything that you guys continue to do for her. And all of those parents out there watching who can relate to this right now, who continue to work from home or continue to, you know, maybe go in the office some days a week and, and work at home other days of the week. That's the, the biggest thing we're talking about, relatability, how others can learn from you, Corey, and what you continue to do and how you continue to provide your team strength every day, even when it is a hard day, because let's be real, not every day can be good. We are not here telling you that every day is going to be good. And when I say positive, uh, you know, it doesn't always mean that I'm having a good day. It means that I understand that Today is a bad day in the sea of many good days. So you need to continue to think about those things and continue to strive for something better. And so Corey, um, before we close this out, you know, I, I'd love for you to share, what are some things that you wanna strive for in 2021? You know, whether that be with your team or as the organization or really as a whole. <laughs> I know. I'm I mean, so it's so question. like it's so broad. I mean, there's so many things, but really, it's, like what you can think of. I guess, just as I was saying earlier, the hope that you know we'll eventually open back up, you know, as the office to bring in clients to see them more face to face, more often than we're doing right now, uh, just to kind of get that therapeutic relationship back, um, and just to be able to get the team back into the office because you know it, it's great that we can meet through Zoom or through Teams as we do every day. But there's nothing better than being able to sit, you know, elbow to elbow or shoulder to shoulder with a colleague and really work on a problem, really, you know, dig, dig home and, and figure out the best solution for, um, for a client or for themselves. So I guess just being able to get back into the office is a huge goal for me for 2021. Obviously, it's not my say so. It'll come from the higher ups and from the CDC or whoever we need to listen to. But um, with things trending in the right direction, I, I hope that's going to be one of the big things to look forward to. Um, and something else you mentioned earlier just in terms of our uh, education. Yes, it took us a long time to get to where we are today, especially with gain, gaining our master's degrees. But it doesn't take a master's degree to you know, open up to somebody, to ask somebody, hey, are you, you doing okay today? Is everything all right? You know, that should just be a, a basic human necessity. It's just to be able to talk to somebody and say to one another, yeah, I'm not feeling too good. I just gotta talk, talk about something. You don't need to send them to a professional, just be an open ear. So I guess my biggest goal for humanity is just to open up and listen more, you know, and have a better understanding of mental illness because it's not going away anytime soon. And obviously over the last year, we've seen an increase in anxiety or depression, just how to deal with the day in and day out things in life. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that I actually had depression or anxiety. I'm not going to self-diagnose myself and I don't want anybody to, but obviously, like you said, there's, there were bad days. There weren't all great. But you just have to see it through, talk to your support system, whether it be a family, a friend, or a mental health professional. You know, there are resources out there available to, you know, to call, to email. You know, technology has thankfully given us a, a bunch of different routes to be able to reach out to somebody in our time of need. 
extremely, extremely, extremely important. If I could rewind and have everybody listen to that again, please go ahead and rewind about five minutes and listen to everything Corey just said. It's extremely important. You are completely right, Corey, that you do not need to have a degree in this. You do not need to have a master's degree in order to lean on someone, to talk to someone, to seek out a family member, to seek out a friend, to seek out a mental prof uh, mental health professional. Uh, you know, use this as a resource here today. Uh, find somebody that you feel comfortable speaking with. Uh, you know, like Corey said, we've we've all been through very challenging times through the past year that, you know, were unprecedented. Nobody knew how to deal with them. We all are continuing to learn together every day. And, uh, you know, my hope, Corey, is also to be bumping elbows with everybody and hugging everybody. And, uh, you know, I can't wait for that day to happen because I feel very fortunate to be over Zoom with you today, but I can't wait to be in front of you talking and learning from you again. So, as I wrap us here today, wrap us up, you know, Corey, I am so fortunate that you came on and I am, I, I want to continue that everybody listen, everybody listening, everybody watching, I want you to continue to use us as a pillar of strength. Um, reach out to the ACT team if you know somebody that um, maybe needs uh, some help with the, and in the disorders that Corey has mentioned, uh, you know, and reach out to a mental health professional if you think that's necessary. Uh, ne you're never in it alone. We are all in this together. Even if you feel like you're alone, you are not alone. There are many, many people in the world that are dealing with exactly the same issues that you might be dealing with exactly the same time. You might not even know it. Um, so continue to use each other, continue to motivate each other, uh, continue to, in a world full of a lot of misinformation, you know, seek out some good information and real people in real time who are dealing with real issues. And, um, as we continue to move forward, we're gonna have amazing panelists on. So I want you guys to all go ahead, hit over to the YouTube page, check out the other uh, panelists, see if there's anything that resonates with you and share it with a family member, share it with a friend. Um, and Corey, as we close out, I always like to end with my panelists saying one little piece of advice or one little piece of takeaway that we can all close us out with because I, I am so fortunate that you shared all that you have today. <laughs> Whew, uh, I love being put on the spot, but it takes me a moment to really get my thoughts <laughs> together. Uh, if I would have to just give one piece of advice, you know, you're not weak to ask for help. Nobody in this world is ever weak to ask for help. We may think it. We may have been told in the past that we're weak if we need to ask somebody for help. I'm here to tell you you're not weak. I'm looking at you dead in the camera. You are not weak to reach out to somebody. If it can't be a family member, have it be a friend. If it can't be a friend, look me up. Talk to me. I don't care if you're a stranger. Talk to Dawn. She doesn't care if you're a stranger. You know, make that first effort to reach out and say, I need somebody because we are here for you. Yeah. Corey, you didn't even need a moment. Are you kidding me? I mean, that was absolutely perfect. I, I like if everyone could just go back and rewind the whole entire thing now and just rewatch everything Corey has said, I think you'll be set. And maybe rewatch it over and over and share that with a family member and share that with a friend because you are completely right. You are not weak for asking for help or seeking out a friend or seeking out a family member and communicating with them. And even when you never know what to say, sometimes sitting in silence with somebody is easier than sitting in silence by yourself. So uh, Corey, I am so fortunate to have you here today and thank you so much. And I can't wait until we can actually meet again in person. Sounds good, I'm looking forward to it. All right, guys, thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week for our next panel discussion. <laughs>